2024 champion versus champion high school basketball tournament between the IIAG champion Father Duenas Friars and the ISA champion GW Geckos. My name is Jay Leon Grove from Guam Sports Network. I'm here with um, my good buddy Eddie Pelkey, former national coach, former national team player, former head coach for the women's national team, former FD head coach, and just a basketball historian to come up here. Thank you, Eddie, for having us. Let's um, dig into this game, this special expedition ex exhibition game. Um, what do you? What is your take between the two teams? And if we're in Vegas, who would you bet on? Good evening, sports fans. That's a loaded question. I'm biased. Uh, but tonight, we got two teams with completely different styles. Uh, GW, they want to play good, tough defense, and they want to slow the game down, make a little bit of a half-court game. Father Duenas, on the other hand, they want to push the pace. They want to press you a little bit, make you play a little faster, turn you over, and then convert those into easy transition opportunities. So uh, it's going to be a great chess match right off the bat with GW wanting to play a little slower game. FD wanted to make it more of a track meet. Okay, so we're about um, 90 seconds away. They're going to introduce the starting lineups for us. Who are there? Who, who, in your opinion, is probably the more key players from both teams? And what do you, if you were coaching, what would you be doing as far as starting this game out? What would your message be to your team? You know, I had an opportunity to speak to uh, both coaches before the uh, game started, and uh, we'll start with GW. Coach Mandel, uh, obviously, when you have two teams that haven't played them, haven't played each other all season long and really have that no time to scout the other team. Uh, you know, Coach Mandel is just focused on his team and what they can do. Uh, again, which is playing half court, playing tough defense. Um, Kaden Apieg, Darnell Camacho, DJ Osborne, those are the big three for them. Uh, he expects a big game out of Darren Treltis and his X factor is Preston Frederick. If Preston Frederick can speed the pace, if he can, if he can be a nuisance defensively and be a pester, he may not score a point, but his plus minus has been real good this year. On the flipping of it, Father Duenas has size all over the place. And the thing about their size is they're skillful. Noah Tenorio is arguably the best player in all of high school right now. He can play on the wing against smaller guys. He can post them up down low, and if he's got big guys guarding him, he can pull them out to perimeter and take him one-on-one. -on -one. The transfer, Rello Romero, has been a huge part of the Father Duenas Friars cleaning up everything in the paint. And Noah Cruz has been just athletic and everything for them. So um, I expect big things out of those three along with the big three of GW. Okay, and ladies and gentlemen, we are live. It is packed in here at the FD Phoenix Center. Um, there's a special half-court shot we're going to have or a halftime show for a Kia car from Triple J Motors. And um, they're going to have a raffle drawing at halftime. So we'll be airing that as well. But in, in the meantime, our uh, CEO from GSPN, Pat Lujan, is introducing the starting lineups. And for the Father Duenas Friars, let's just go over the starting lineup. At guard, we have Phil Guerrero, a senior. The shooting guard, Tobias Kitagua, also a senior. In the middle, Noah Cruz, center at a junior. And then as Eddie said, one of the scrappers, the front court for FD, Melo Ramiro, the transfer, a senior and um, arguably one of the best high school players, Noah Tenorio, a forward who's still a junior. The head coach for FD is Jimmy Yee, assistant coaches Ryan Treltes and Jerry Polino. Right now they're introducing the GW starting lineup. Eddie, you want to go over the starting lineup for GW? Starting for GW tonight, number 24, KVD Apiag, a senior at guard, also at guard. Number one, Darren Treltes, a senior. Preston Frederick, a junior, number 34 at guard. Darnell Camacho, the man in the middle, just a sophomore. And DJ Osborne, a forward, a senior, wraps up the starting lineup for your ESA champions, GW Geckos. And now your starting lineup for your 20 We're just going to wait for them to introduce the rest of the starting lineups live. If you're around town and you're, you're in the area, if you want to come down, make your way in. Scoot your way in to have a seat. They opened up the stage here at the FD Phoenix Center. So we have more chairs available. And uh, you will be eligible for that halftime raffle for that car. Sponsored by Triple G Motors. Just to recap the, the two championship games, 
FD just won two days ago against the Guamai Panthers. Uh, the players of the game for that game was, was Melo Romero and Noah Tenorio. Both of them had double doubles for that game. Last week, the GW Geckos um, came from behind to beat the Okodo Bulldogs. So that's their road to get here. Also, notably, GW also upset the number two seed, Sanchez Sharks, to get to that championship game that come from behind win down at Southern High where they beat Okodo Bulldogs. So here we go. We have um, jumping. We have Melo Romero and uh, Darnell Camacho. And we're underway, and um, Camacho gains possession. Trotas up top, being guarded by Noah Tenorio. Let's see how they look in the beginning to open up the contest. Trotas with the ball on the right wing. Oh, Phil Guerrero with some swarming defense there, forces a turnover. FD will get possession, first possession of the game. Yeah, hey, FD, FD a little unorthodox, you know, with their uh, coach Jimmy Yee likes to have his bigs bring the ball up to create a little bit of mismatch problems right off the bat. Okay, and the defense for uh, GW looks like they were playing man. Clogging the lane, the big man. Oh, foul. Let's see who this is on because fouls could be something for GW if their big man gets into foul trouble. And that is on Camacho. Oh, I'm sorry. Number 34, Christian Frederick. So Camacho stays out of foul trouble for that. In the meantime, we have uh, Phil Guerrero on the charity stripe trying to attempt to score the first points of the game. Yeah, GW is a very, very good half-court man-to-man team. Uh, they've got great rotation. They've got great communication. Coach Bandel doing an excellent job uh, with his defense. Uh, they give up an average of about 38 points a game only, while FD, on the other hand, averages about 67 a game. So, again, a great chess match here. Maybe nerves are playing a little bit into this quote-unquote exhibition game because that's two early turnovers, unforced turnovers by the Geckos. FD leads 1-0. Phil Guerrero went 1-2 of two at the charity stripe. Yeah, GW needs to settle down right now. Uh, you know, big, great crowd here tonight. Uh, obviously, for GW, this must feel like a road game, knowing that they're playing at the Friars' home, but they just got to settle down. Mm, Romero goes in, and Camacho with the, the board. GW has the ball with APAG up on the top, with FDs playing also man defense. Trotis drives to the basket for the shot in the paint, rebounded by APAG, who scores. Whoa. Yeah, FD, one of the better rebounding teams, at least in the double I, double AG. They don't give up a lot of second chance opportunities. A rare second chance opportunity given up there. And there's Romero. That's what he does best, offensive rebounds. In the championship game, he had six offensive rebounds. He's really scrappy, likes to move around. But the length of Camacho kind of alters that shot there. GW's up 2-1. to one. We're about a minute and 30 seconds into this contest. Noah Tenorio telling his team to just relax. Shots off. Treltis with the offensive board. Puts it up. Barely misses. Noah Cruz of the rebound. And FD has a chance to come down and regain the lead. Tobias Kitago is their shooting guard. Offensive rebound again for Romero. And he gets a successful putback this time. Yeah, Romero's done that all season long. Uh, GW's got to be able to put a body on him all season. Yeah, he's very active down low. Sure is. And he's going to have his hands full with probably one of the better big men in the league with, with Camacho on him. The GW again almost turning the ball over, but they do turn it over. Guerrero has the ball with two defenders, brings it back out to Kirigua. Kirigua dishes down to Melo. And he was pushed from behind by Camacho or a travel. The yeah, he walked. He, there. Do you agree with that call? Yeah, he, he, he walked with the ball before he was able to get contacted. Good call by uh, referee Benji Mascalino. Hey, like you said, uh, GW is keeping this low scoring so far. Or maybe it's nerves that play into effect. Osborne with a three-pointer, his first shot attempt of the game. 
Rebounded by number 34 from GW Preston Frederick. Yeah, I don't think Romero's the big that Coach E would want pushing the ball up the sideline. His second turnover, his second travel call for this game here in the first quarter. Osborne up top. Mm, nice behind the back dribble. He's being guarded by Cruz. Frederick with a three-point attempt. It's long, rebounded by Cruz. Bro, the senior point guard out to Tenorio for a long three, just off the back iron. Long rebound goes to Guerrero, who dribbles down the left sideline. Passes it to Tenorio. Bodies up. Yep. Oh, Tenorio is pumped up. He had to get his own offensive rebound. Very, very aggressive down low is Tenorio. Yeah, and, but the thing I'm looking low. at right now, the half court set is Camacho is really a presence in the middle of the court right now. Uh, he's deterring a lot of shots by FD. Uh, Romero, Cruz, Tenorio, uh, they're, they're having to double clutch, rub pump fake. So we, we need to watch that as the game goes on. Oh, I think we have a timeout. Desmond sees that there's three unforced errors by the guards on up top. It's just basically simple passes that they're not connecting with the other guards. So maybe he's calling a timeout just to settle his team down. It's still early in this contest. You're down by three points. Yeah, they're, they're right now the half court trap. FD's looking, they're looking to trap across in the corners right when they get the ball across half court. Uh, what GW has to do is they need to shift the ball to one side, force that zone to shift all the way over. And then once they get FD to commit, they need a quick ball reversal. But once they get the ball reversal, they need to go up the court to the basket and then attack the last one or two defenders on the backside. Uh, right now, GW is getting the ball across half court and it's dying and it's allowing FD to send the second defender and put him in a position where they're able to trap him. So GW has to stay from those hot spot trapping corners, shift the ball quickly, and then attack on the opposite side of the court. Okay, we have some subs coming in for FD. To, uh, Romero goes to the bench along with Guerrero. In the game is Alfred Leon Guerrero. And uh, freshman guard Jared Cole from St. Anthony, who has um, had some highlight plays so far in his young season, and he's part of this program. He's going to be a big deal. Probably next year as he develops and he grows. Yeah, Cole is a great player. And there is that bench you've been talking about earlier that FD has. Yeah, Jimmy Leon Guerrero. Is a lucky, is very, is very fortunate to have a, a lot of depth on his bench. But right now, the pace favoring FD. This is what they want. They want to keep running up and down the court. He takes up so much real estate down there. He does, but so does Camacho. Boards. Osborne with the rebound. Long rebound after FD had three attempts. Blocking foul on Cruz. FD had a really good guy who used to take those charges. His name was Raymond Castro. Remember him? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was great. Great guy. Great guy. Yeah, FD... FD doesn't take as many charges as they used to. <laughs> yeah, he had his side to him, and um, DJ was going downhill, and he recognized his uh, defender was off. Yeah, Osborne is one of the one of the best players in the open court. Uh, got a great handle. He's got a good jump shot, and he's he's excellent at finishing at the rim. So, um, but again, you know, early early things right now. The pace is favoring FD. This is what they want. They want to make it attract me. They want to force you to make some early mistakes, and then transition that into easy scoring opportunities. And Osborne misses the first of two free throws. Okay, we have a sub going out. Tenorio out for Melo Romero coming back into the game. And then Colin Baker, another young shooter that FD has. Yeah, he, he's a he, sophomore. He, he stepped up big in the double I, double AG championship game in the first quarter. Was able to help them break the gout and open right away. There's FD pushing the pace again. Leon Guerrero for a three-pointer. Rebound goes to GW. And just checking into the game for GW is Aiden and Kenko who got that long rebound. 
Offensive foul on Treltis. We saw the arm push off there. Yeah, clear, clearly an arm call. push off. Didn't need it, but unfortunately got caught right, right in front of uh, referee Robert Tamadong. Okay, we have Cole at point guard dribbling up. He has uh, to his disposal, he has Baker out on the three-point line and he has interior players. Or he could drive to the basket. So that, that, that's Jared, that's the strength of his game. He's, he's fearless going to the basket and for a smaller guard, he has an uncanny ability to absorb contact and finish at the rim. Um, he's been a spark plug for the Friars all season. It's looking like he's making his presence felt early in the first quarter. David Del Carmen checking in for uh, Noah Cruz. He's a very good volleyball player. He has uh, a very good jumping ability. He had a couple of key blocks uh, on the IAG championship game as well. Cole misses a free throw. Romero with his third offensive rebound. Ball goes out to Baker. Foul on Romero. Foul on Romero. That's his first foul of the ball game. Yeah, Melo's got to settle down a little bit right now. He's a little too anxious. He's playing a little too hard. He's just got to settle down and let the game come to him. Oh, Leon Guerrero with the steal. Baker dribbles up. Cole's going to take it to the basket. Passes it out to Leon Guerrero on the right side. Ball out of bounds. Good recovery by GW. Yeah, right Right now it looks like GW is trying to break that half-court press by attacking the middle. FD is doing an excellent job covering the middle. Right now their weakness is on the sidelines, but they got to go deep up the sidelines to have any opportunity to get past that first line. All the pressure. They've got about three guys up top sending a fourth. If they can get the ball just past that first line, they'll be going to have some numbers advantages on the backside. Del Carmen in and out. There's Leon Guerrero again to pick up the trash. That's his second putback. Yeah, Leon Guerrero, is, he's, he's, he's been a big, big player for them in the playoffs and right towards the end of the season. Is that what you were talking about, Eddie? Foul on Tenorio. Yeah, he tried to look long for Leon Guerrero there. He was wide open in the corner. Unfortunately, Osborne, just long as well, able to get a hand on the ball, turn them over. Okay, just for those of you who can't see the scoreboard right now, it's FD 11, GW 5, with 216 remaining in the first quarter. And GW has possession. AP act to Treltis on the left side. Camacho sets a pick. He's rolling. Del Carmen with the steal. Takes it coast to coast for a layup. FD up 13 to 5. Big statement in the first quarter. There's that trap again. And Kanko with the mid range jumper and he makes it. Credit the assist to Apiak there. Then you got the feeling this is a fast-paced game. This is something that GW doesn't like. Yeah, something they probably don't want to play. Now well, we got a foul on Kenko, trying to reach in on the dribble handoff there. But yeah, again, the pace, the pace favors FD. GW, again, Coach Mandel, he wants to slow. He wants to play more of a half-court game. You know, sometimes when the flow of the game gets dictated like that, it's hard to break out of it. Okay. And we have some subs coming in. Peter Elgin comes in for um, for Unkenko. And back, Noah Tenorio checks out. Phil Guerrero, the senior, comes back in. We have two point guards in the game for FD right now. Playing, this is a, I guess you could say this is their small lineup. Looking to trap, Osborne dribbles up, finds a sideline to. Yeah, FD plays very positionless, uh, meaning that they don't necessarily have people fill your conventional forward, power forward, center positions. Their offense is very positionless where they, they, they look to drive and kick, create good scoring opportunities, and kick out to open shooters. Del Carmen with the rebound, lost his balance and traveled. Okay, we are at 13 to seven right now, 107 left in the first quarter. FD is leading.
Peter Hogan gets the ball to Osborne. Up the middle, passes to Camacho. That was a nice pass from big man to big man. Yeah, and that, you know, right now, this is the, if FD's gonna stand that man to man, I'm feeding Camacho all day long. Baker with a missed three pointer, falls into the hands of Guerrero and he makes a yeah, wide the open basket. Gecko's right gotta now. do a better job putting body on bodies right now. They're giving yeah. up way too many second chance opportunities. FD's a very small team right now. Oh, bad pass again by GW. Turnover by Co. Here's Apiag taking the ball down court. So Treltis gets the offensive board. Foul on Del Carmen. That's a shooting foul. Treltis will go to line shooting two with 15.6 seconds left in the first quarter. Trochus to the line. FD looks like Troy DeRigi getting ready to check back, check into the game for the first time. He throws good for Trochus. We are currently at 15 to 10. Advantage to FD. Yeah, Coach, he already has gone 10 players deep just in the first quarter. And Eddie, that's how it's been all season. Yeah, he, he likes to keep guys fresh. That Carmen, pump fake, really good pump fake. And that ends the first quarter, prior 17. GW10. Savings Plus, all designed to help you bank how you move. Keep banking, keep moving. Don't stop now. Bank of Guam, the People's Bank, member FDIC. Connect to who and what matters most with Beam Home Internet. Every family has its own unique needs, so it's our priority to set up the solution that will give you the best possible service. Either way, Okay, welcome back, folks. And um, after the first quarter, FD leads 17 to 10. What would your message be to the GW guys coming out of uh, the first quarter? Uh, we got to do a better job attacking that uh, half court, three quarter court press of FD. Um, they need to get guys out to the sideline, maybe even down to the corners. And then once you get it past that first line, look to attack the basket. Don't settle for jump shots. Right now, the difference in the game is turnovers. And right, GW's turned the ball over uh, probably twice as much at FD. Yeah, the bottom line, I think if GW takes care of the basketball, this game will be a little bit closer. And also, they do have to box out. Because FD did have a lot of second chance opportunities. and uh, So did GW, though. Ago. So did GW. You know, uh, uncharacteristically, FD gave about four offensive rebounds in that first quarter. So uh, FD's got to clean that up as well. Okay, and quick subs there for Koji. He got his uh, front... His, his trio front, front court in the game with uh, Romero, Tenorio, and Cruz in the game. The guards for FD right now is uh, number five. Phoenix Borja. Phoenix Borja. He played. He played when you were coaching as a freshman, I believe. No. No, he wasn't? He's a, Phoenix is only a sophomore this year. I've been gone three years. Okay. Okay, we're still at 17-10. Tenorio looks to feed 
Romero lowers his shoulder. Yeah, Offensive Romero again. Just yeah. Romero's uh, gesturing that he flopped. <laughs> his second personal foul. I don't know. I thought it was a good call. Okay. Here, a lot of hand fighting and arm fighting. Here's the puzzle they have to solve, GW. Peter Uggen with a three-point attempt. It's long. Rebound to Derige, who dribbles quickly up the court, pushing the pace as FD always does. Yeah, but Cruz again. gives the ball to Ramiro. Ramiro to the corner to Phoenix. Just shy. It was a good. Uh, Phoenix Bora had a good shot attempt there. Rebound by Osborne. Oh. Borja with the foul. He swiped Troutus. And for those of you who haven't watched um, high school basketball this year, they go by fouls per quarter. Once you're at your fifth foul, in each quarter, you shoot a bonus, two shots. Correct. So it's very key to not foul early in the quarter. Yeah, if you were watching the double I, double IG championship game, FD fouled quite a bit in that second half. They sent Cam Brantley to the line, I want to say over 30 times in just the second half. Yeah, he was uh, making a home of that charity strike there. Yeah, I didn't think he was going to go home from UOG. <laughs> GW, uh, trail test with a long three-pointer rebound by uh, Alfred Leongoro. Dribbles. Okay, let's see if that's a foul. No, it's a kickball, kickball. Kickball, okay. Referee right Ernest now, the Aquino. Friars have two fouls in the quarter early. Yeah, GW right now is settling for jump shots. You know, maybe that's FD size that's not allowing them to get the lanes that they want, but they're settling for a lot of jump shots. The problem with that is longer jump shots lead to long rebounds, and when there's long rebounds, that allows FD to get into their transition game a lot quicker the offensively. Early offense. Almost another still. Unforced turnover again by GW. Timeout by Yi. See if he's going to try and um, set up his offense. Okay, welcome every back. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Right now, it's 17 to 10 in the second quarter. No team has scored thus far. In two minutes into the second quarter, uh, Coach Yi calls a timeout, probably to regroup the offense. It's a good plan. Give Tenorio the ball. Yeah, when, when, when FD needs a bucket, you know they're going to go to Tenorio. And Tenorio, he's just a mismatch problem. You know, if he gets a smaller guy, he's going to back him in like he did against Osborne there. If he gets a big on him, he's going to take him out to perimeter and look to take him off the dribble. Yeah, Osborne with the, with the short jumper there misses. Uh, rebound goes to Cruz. Borja with the ball up top, gives the ball to Cruz. Waves off the pick, goes into the lane, throws one up, and it goes in. Yeah, FD right now is trying to expose the middle of F uh, GW's man-to-man. -man. Uh, they're basically putting them in a position where they can't help from the corners. And Ugin with the three-pointer. That he's heated up. This isn't your typical exhibition game, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Number 13 for FD. Jacob Rages. 
That's his game. Answers Ogun with a three-pointer. Number 41 from GW checked into the game. Kairos or Richiro? And this is what GW's got to do, you know. Tenorio's going to be guarding a guard the whole game long. Uh, he's their best offensive player. If I was Coach Mandel and I see Tenorio guarding one of my quicker guards, I'm looking to isolate that and take him off the dribble. See if you can get him to a little bit of foul trouble. Send him to the bench. Give your team a better opportunity to score some baskets and get some stops. Yeah, right now it looks like they're just trying to get past half court. They're looking for DJ Osborne in the middle on the top of the, on top of the three-pointer, and then he's going to just dish out for the, those... Those long jump shots, as you said. Yeah, you know, one of they made one of, the last one, but are we going to do that all game? Well, one of the common mistakes of most teams when it comes to breaking a press is they break the press and then they think, okay, the team gets out of that press and it's all done. You got to take advantage of the aggressiveness of the other team, and once you break it, you need to attack them so you can force them to get out of it. And Apiag there with the acrobatic layup, we saw a lot of that in the championship game. He was key for, to them winning the championship. Three-pointer by Rages goes in and out. Ball goes to DJ Osborne. Steals the ball. Rages with the steal gives the ball to Tenorio up court. Del Carmen, or I'm sorry, that's Cole at the right wing. Slowing things down. And Camacho with the block. Apiak settles the ball down, gives it to Treltis on the left side. GW going quick now. Okay, what is this? Is this going to be... A blocking foul or a charge? Okay, that's a blocking foul. We're yeah, going to get go, two go, shots. Going back to the previous possession, Camacho was a big presence defensively on the opposite end of the court. FD's got to do, they, you know, I would, I, would, I would force him to get into pick and roll, move him away from the basket. On the opposite end of the court here, Treltis, great take to the basket with the foul, gets chance for two free throws. Okay, now we're at 30, 3 minutes and 40 seconds left before halftime. Um, we're in the second quarter. The score is FD 24, GW 15. You got to think that GW is trying to cut this deficit down. Go into, the, go into the locker room and regroup. Get into this ball game. And prevent FD from getting more than a double-digit lead at halftime. Right, and I think one of the ways they can do that. Right now, FD has 14 fouls. And as you had mentioned earlier, Jay, when a team gets the five team fouls, they get an opportunity to shoot two free throws. So if I was Coach Mendel, I'd be telling GW right now, hey, guys, we don't want to settle for jump shots. We're not shooting any three-pointers. We want everything going to the rim, going to the basket, put pressure on the referees to make some calls and generate some high-quality shot attempts. If you don't get it and you get fouled, you get an opportunity to score points without the clock moving. And that's, how, that's one opportunity they can get back in this game. I can't agree with you more on that on that game plan, get them, get FD in foul trouble. In particular, they're big guys, so that it takes away the offensive rebounds for you. So maybe that's exactly what De Coach Mendel is telling his guys. Hey, look, look up at the scoreboard. We got, they got four fouls. Let's be more aggressive and take the ball to the hoop instead of settling for the long jumpers. Yeah, it's no secret that FD plays best when they have their three bigs on the floor in Cruz, Tenorio, and Romero. If you can get one, two, or possibly all three of them out of the game, it completely changes the complexity of the Friars because they no longer will have those great second chance opportunities on those possessions. So, okay. Notably, um, Romero is uh, he has two fouls at the, at this at this point of the game. So you got to be very careful not to get that third foul going to halftime. We got Trotters on the foul line. Uh, it's 24 to 15, and he misses the first free throw but then again when you get to the free throw free throw line you got to make your free throws yeah, that's been an Achilles heel for most teams on Guam good free throw shooting right and again this is where home court advantage kind of comes into play for, you know for FD and Trotters misses both free throws no sign of uh, pressure by GW they, they allow FD to take the ball up court oh foul on the screen yeah. Del Carmen with the offensive foul Fouls on Del Carmen, but that, 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 that fouls on Noah Cruz. Noah Cruz needs to allow Del Carmen to get set. It's, it's Del Carmen's job to just stay still and get the pick. It's Cruz's job to utilize it. He went too early, put his teammate in a bad position. He's the reason for that turnover. Okay, so that is, now they got the, the fifth foul, but it was, a, it was an offensive foul. It doesn't send them to the, to the free throw line. So let's see what GW is going to do now. Trotis on a handoff from Camacho, makes a long jumper, 
The score is now 24-17. We're within seven points for GW. The bigs again, like you said, Eddie, taking the ball up court. Offensive rebounding. Del Carmen's there. Just like Leon Guerrero, he's always on that weak side for that rebound. Yeah, you know, the thing about FD is they, they don't run any true set plays. They have a base concept on offense, and that base concept is, you know, getting guys, getting downhill, going to the rim, watching the defense collapse, and then putting their shooters in, in spaces where they can take that open look or they can look to attack the basket with guys running out of them from the key. Tenorio with the steal, takes it to the coast to coast for another score and FD's back up by double digits exactly what you did not want to happen if you were Coach Mandel. Yeah. And again, GW is trying to attack the middle to break it. That's that's not the, where the weakness of that press is right now. Camacho had a good look. He just missed it. They had two guys. He had both Tenorio and Del Carmen on him. But the ball bounced to Apiag who made the three-pointer. Fortunate enough to sink that one. Cruz out to Cole, to Del Carmen for a three-pointer. He doesn't take many of those. And that's why. Oh, Camacho. Offensive rebound. Just like that, 28 to 22. GW got into a little run. They're on a little 5-0 run right now after the three-pointer. Yep. And the dish down to Camacho, 28 to 22, 140 left. We got Romero coming in and Baker coming in. Going out of the game are uh, Del Carmen and Regis. Yeah, Coach E coming back with Romero, who already has two fouls. Kind of risky with less than two minutes to go in this half. But after seeing Camacho miss and get his own rebound, maybe he senses that Melo, uh, Melo will put a body on him so to prevent that offensive board. Osborne with the steal, going up against Nello. Good defense and good recovery by Romero, not fouling as well. Wide open look by Tenorio. And Camacho Colin again, uh oh, uh oh. Uh Camacho, looks like he made her hurt his knee. Sophomore Darnell Camacho has been a force defensively for GW in the paint. Nothing has come easy. Coach Bendel forced to take out his starting center right now. Coming in for um, Camacho is number 10. AK Noy. Materni. I'm sorry. So GW can can put it to three points or four points. 53 seconds left, 28 to 22, FD leads. Here comes the pressure, Borja on Troutis. Apiag with the ball. Materni takes a three. Long rebound goes to Phil Guerrero. Still by Frederick, but he travels. Good effort. 24 seconds left in the half. It looks like FD uh, will take the last shot if they don't get a good inbound down low. Yeah, watch, watch for the weak side back door. This is a play they ran very effectively against Guam High. They're going to look to flatten out Tenorio run some misdirection and then try to send him back door to the weak side. And there he goes. Fifteen seconds left. Frederick with the steal. Troutis passes it up to Osborne and makes the layup. 28 to 24. FD is going to take the final shot. With two seconds left. From the logo, Tenorio misses. You gotta think, momentum's on GW's side after that. They had on a little run, 
they did what they had to do after that timeout. They're only trailing by four points right now. Um, right now, we're, it looks like we're going to go with the Triple J half court contest. Someone's going to be winning a car tonight. They're going to have a raffle. But before we do so, let's just let's just see what what would you tell your team or both both sides of the court. What would you tell the GW Geckos going into the locker room? Uh, right now, I mean, the GW Geckos, you know, right? We got momentum going on our side. We're playing good half court defense. We're making it difficult. We're challenging their shots. Uh, but what we need to do is, again, when we break that press, we got to attack the back line and try to get the ball going to the rim. What GW is doing is they break the press and then they're pulling the ball back out and just allowing FD to get back into their man-to-man -man and then they're trying to run a half-court offense. But once you beat that press, you got to go and try to attack the backside and make them force them to get out of it. On the FD side of things right now, the, the, the pace is in your favor. You're generating a lot of good shot opportunities, so the pace is in your favor. But right now, you're, you're, you're rushing a little too much and the quality of those shot attempts are getting a little wild. They need to settle down, run some basic offensive stuff, and see if they can't generate mismatches to get to Norio Romero, something inside. Okay. So again, at halftime, it's 28 to 24, the FD Friars lead. We're, um, we're gonna go to a quick commercial break before we watch the uh, half court shot. We'll be back in about a minute. and True Savings Plus, all designed to help you bank how you move. Keep banking, keep moving. Don't stop now. Bank of Guam, the People's Bank, member FDIC. Make sure you're not an employee, triple junior, or an immediate family member. 
There are some fees involved, taxes, registration, but you know. You get the car free. We're gonna be filming the shot. We gotta cover everything. I got my uh, personal cameraman with me. I figured I'd love him. Joey, he's the man behind the cam. Okay, I'm ready. Now, if he, if he doesn't pan out, then we're gonna have to call somebody else's name, so you still might have a chance to win. And he can decline if he chooses to. Oh man, he's got sliders on. Are those working socks shown? Can somebody let him borrow his shoes? What size are you? Go find your shoes. He's sorry, he's like, I'm gonna have it. Anyone, please. I think he's serious. If you're a size of the he has some basketball shoes on. Is he good? Okay. We're gonna just pop something in a second. Really, you're gonna put on some penny the first time, man. I think you're better off with those. Oh, those are moccasins, my bad. So this is better. All right, so did you get the rules? Earlier when I was saying it? This is, yeah, we'll come on to the court. We'll be very specific, so we have no excuses. That's the best it, obviously. You're familiar with that. Yeah. So, a layup. You make the layup, free throw. Once you make the free throw, you can miss. That's fine, you just gotta take the shot. Then you move to the three-point shot. Once you make the three-point shot, then you can take the 43 foot shot. You see the basket tape on the court there? Right here. That line, you gotta come behind this line and make that shot. Now with the previous shots, you have multiple attempts. If you miss the layup, you can keep going until you make it. Same thing with the free throw and the three-pointer. You get one shot at the 43 footer. 24 seconds, you got the shot clock, okay? Good? Awesome. Give it a 
round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Edwin Aguero. No, sorry, you don't get to keep the ball. But we got some chairs for you. So you can go sit down. Okay, all right, thank you. Good sport, good job. Let's see your picture. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for coming out supporting Champion vs. Champion GSPS. Let's turn on the music and let's have that guy on shot. Introducing Bank of Guam's new deposit products, Pacific Express, Pacific Express Plus, True Savings, and True Savings Plus. All designed to help you bank how you move. Keep banking, keep moving. Don't stop now. Bank of Guam. Okay, basketball fans, we're back here at the FD Phoenix Center. Uh, Eddie, I just wanted to talk to you about the MVP for this season for IAG, the voting on Monday or Tuesday this week. What's your take on that, and who do you think should be the MVP? Or let's go and let's go make it interesting. What is your All Island top five? Two guards, two forwards, and a center. For, Both for, leagues for Double I Double AG. ISA already has theirs. Is Monte Cabrera. But who do you think should be IAG's top five? Uh, Raven Pasqual from St. Paul. I put Noah Tenorio from FD as a four-man. Raven will be your one guard. Noah would be your one forward. Uh, I think Melo Romero from FD would be the five-man, the center. Um, Cam Brantley would be the other forward along with Noah Tenorio. And then the final guard would most likely be Yeah, um, you know, the freshman at St. John's, Tristan Hahn, uh, has had a great season for them. Uh, you know, he, he, he'd get some consideration uh, along with uh, Rain Cornelius from Notre Dame, had a decent season as well. So I'd, I'd lean more towards Tristan Hahn. So I go Raven Pasquale, Tristan Hahn at the guards, Noah Tenorio, Cam Bradley at the forwards, and then Melo Romero at the, at, at the center position. And I'd give the MVP to Raven Pasquale of St. Paul. You heard it here. So they're voting on Tuesday. Maybe they're listening and could get some guidance from you. Anyways, we're back here. The ISA versus IAG, champion versus champion of 2024. Uh, the possession arrow goes to the uh, GW Geckos. They're down by four. And let's see how this is going to pan out. Are we going to go to overtime? Is the team going to pull away in the third quarter? It's all important on this third quarter right now. So both teams have their starters out. Um, according to the uh, GW bench, Camacho was holding his wrist. And then he had an injury to um, a little knee injury or aggravated his knee uh, at the end of the second quarter. So that's something to look for, um, look into coming into this third quarter. Yeah, after looking like they're going to play a 2-3 zone right now, changing it up right at the start of the second half. Great, great call by Coach E. Okay, GW, who was going to the middle, they were doing that a lot with the man defense, with DJ Osborne flashing up. Yeah, and, and you know, again, just, uh, just, just, just a great call by Coach E. You know, Coach Mandel's going into halftime. He's talking about the three-quarter court press. He's talking about FD's man-to-man. -man. Coach E throws a 2-3 zone out there and, you know, just kind of gets them off guard just a little bit. Well, on, um, on a play on the sidelines, uh, the ball goes to Osborne, who scores, and now... Eddie, we have a two-point game. 
Noah Cruz's layup left, his southpaw layup is off the mark. GW has a chance to either tie or take the lead on this possession here in the third quarter. Frederick with the ball down to Osborne. Nice pass to Camacho. That was his second point blank shot that he missed. Yeah, you know, he's had a lot of those all season, though. You know, he's, he's you know, from time to time, he struggled getting those, those, those clean looks. You know, sometimes, sometimes as a player, those shots may be too wide open. Mm -hmm. You think about a little too much, and you end up just kind of breaking it. And just to note that Camacho is only a sophomore. He's going to be a force in the next two years. And he always gets it back on the second opportunity, right? I guess he needs more defenders around him to score baskets. And here we are, champion versus champion. The game is tied. GW has overcome a double-digit double deficit. And let's see if FD can answer. Kitagua with a three-pointer. Rebound, offensive rebound to Melo. Frederick with the steal, gives it up to Apiag, who's going down for the fast break layup. And he makes it. All of a sudden, GW has the lead. And GW coming out of the second half with a 6-0 run, taking the lead. Kitagua with the three-pointer. But again, every time FD feels their backs on the wall, Elizabeth, who touches the ball to Norio? When he touches the ball, a lot of good things happen. He creates for his teammates. And there he does, forcing the turnover. Apiago was going a little bit too quick. Tenorio forced him off to the side. And he dribbles the ball out of bounds. So GW had the, the lead for about 20 seconds after uh, Kitagoya hit that three-pointer. It looks like they're going to go down to Tenorio once again. Osborne's on him. Let's see if he can create. Guerrero's got to pull the trigger on that shot. He, he's been passing that shot up all night. He needs to pull the trigger on that. Beautiful move by Tenorio. Osborne, uh -oh. unfortunately, got called for the foul there. Looked like Noah was kind of already losing the ball on the way up. Osborne on just a bad place, bad time, and made a little bit of contact. And Referee Ernest oh, Aquino calls the foul. It was a beautiful spin move by Tenorio. Uh, that foul was actually on Camacho. Oh, wow, they called on that the on Camacho. Side. Only a first personal foul, though, so. Tenorio misses the front end of a free throw. <laughs> I saw that coming. Actually, Romero with the offensive board. I was going to say Camacho should have switched with Osborne. Yeah, you know, Romero, you got to get a body on Romero all game long. That's been the strength all season. But again, you know, that's the unfamiliarity of beautiful move Ooh, by APA. Just the finish. Camacho offensive rebound. In and out. Melo with the board. I have to say he has about 10 rebounds already. I already saw six offensive boards by Romero. Yeah, bad read by Cruz there again. Uh, you know, Melo uh, did a quick slip to the basket, but Cruz went to the same side Romero was slipping to. A lot of get clogged up. Watch the backboard for Romero here. And there's Long Frederick. Down. You know, before the game, I had a chance to coach uh, Coach Derek uh, Desmond Mandel from GW. He mentioned that if there was one X factor outside of his core group, he said Preston Frederick would be that guy. Frederick, he may not have scored any points right now, but he's been a pest defensively in the FD guards. And on offense, he is making the right decisions. Okay. Romero mid-range. Good yeah, contest by Camacho. Definitely not Romero's game low. there. The two guys down low to get the rebound. Again, the score is 33 to 30. FD is leading here in the third quarter after GW took the lead momentarily. 
Schultes with a three-pointer, and we're tied. Beautiful offense by GW. Tenorio's gonna answer, can they answer again? Like Camacho Romero really battling down there. GW with the board. The game is tied, 33-33. You know, one thing of note is FD has only played from behind once the entire season, and that was at St. Paul the first time they played them. So they've played with a comfortable lead all season long. They've never really played where they've been behind for a good portion of the game, and I'm interested to see how they handle that situation if GW is able to go on a little bit of a run here and extend this a little bit. Something to watch for. Yeah, FD is not used to having their backs against the ropes. So we'll see how they respond. Api is a beautiful layup right by a young girl. Now GW has the lead, 35 to 33. Cruz taking the ball up court, looking for someone in the middle. Both Tenorio and Romero are out of the basketball game. Del Carmen right now is the center with Cruz playing guard on offense. The southpaw takes a shot in the paint. It goes in and out, Camacho with the rebound. Treltes takes the ball down court and scores. No, offensive rebound. Guerrero steps in to take the charge. And again, I mean, you see Osborne right now. Osborne is lit up. Osborne is basically saying, this is our time. Osborne making a, oh, oh. Wow. I would have loved to see that again. From our angle up here, Jay, that looked clearly like it was a blocking foul. Yeah, in the NBA, they'd be waving their fingers in the air for the replay that, on it, that It one. looked clearly like that was a blocking foul. It looked like Del Carmen was coming underneath that, but. Uh, referee Benji, you know, he, he had the best look at it, so. We got to give him the benefit of the doubt. So that's, far, that's, the referees have been doing a terrific job, by the way. Yeah, they've been, they've been consistent, but that, that, that's a big call. That's a big swing right now. Yeah, momentum would have definitely been on the side of GW if FD was to go down by five points. Or, excuse me, by four points. Tenorio with the turnover. Comes Apiag. Okay, and a blocking foul now. There's Guerrero down low again, taking the charge. It looks like the exact same play, but uh, referee Ernest makes the blocking call this time. Yeah, he. Th that was the proper call this time. Uh, he. Apiag went to the side of. Yeah, that little side Of Del Carmen, and he, you know, in order to get that charge call, you got to take it straight on your chest. Yeah, that's a. Something about Apiag's game is he went to the right side on the previous play, and in this play, he went to the left side, so. Yeah, Apiag right now is carving up FD's defense. Uh, you know, FD right now, they're getting beat off the ball, one thing, and then they really have no help side on the backside. They're a little stuck to their man. Uh, you know, I know GW's hit a couple threes here, but uh, they've been real stuck to their man. They gotta be able to protect the paint a little bit better, not give up those high percentage shots down there. Okay, and just also note, checking into the ball game after the first free throw from Epiag is Tenorio and Romero. So Epiag up to the line. First free throw on the way. So Tenorio and Romero coming back in for Cruz and Guerrero. And Coach Mandel is calling to the referees about the, someone has an air horn in here. I don't know if this is an ex exhibition game on a regular season game. Is that legal to have those noise No, makers? no, not at all. Uh, you're not supposed to have artificial noise makers as part of National Federation High School rules. I hear several of them. Well, it doesn't bother Apiag. He makes both free throws. GW is up 37 to 33. We have three minutes left in the third quarter. And and Frederick, call. just a little too aggressive there. Yeah, he was grabbing his arm on Del Carmen as he made the drive there. Yeah, and those are the plays that kill coaches. You know, you make, you're, you're in good defensive possession. You've made the stop, 
no reason to bail them out and reach down now. Just hold your position, mirror that basketball, and force them to make a negative pass away from the basket. Okay, and we have Frederick and Apia coming out of the game. Ugin and Trotis are back in. We'll see if um, the G who's GW going to go to on the offensive side right now. With Apia out the game, he's he's been driving to the basket and have finding some success in that. Well, Treltis, Treltis and Camacho right now seem to be the best bets. Uh, Peter Uggen in the perimeter is one of their better shooters. So if they can get some drive and kick opportunities and get Uggen wide open for some looks. Osborne's still in the game as well, and he's probably their best creator. Kanko down to Camacho. Nice pass. And this is probably the largest deficit FD has ever experienced. They're down by six. Let's see how they answer. Three-pointer by Leon Guerrero. Off the mark, rebound to Del Carmen. Three-pointer by Baker. Off the mark, rebound to Treltis, who's taking the ball down court. He has two defenders in his way. Camacho, nice pass. The crowd, the GW crowd is being heard right now. FD is down by eight points. Coach E calls a timeout. The deficit is 41 to 33. GW is up. Two minutes and 13 seconds left. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a ball game. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, watching, um, we're back after FD called a timeout. They're down by eight points. GW's having this incredible third quarter against the undefeated FD Friars here. Eddie, what would you tell the Friars right now coming out of the huddle? Let's settle down, settle down. There's a lot of game left right now. Go back to what's been working for you. You've got some mismatches on the court. Take advantage of it right now. But again, FD, they don't run any true sets. They rely on a lot of one-on-one -on -one offense, and GW is a very, very good man-to-man -man half court team. So you gotta be able to run some sets and force some mismatches. Tenorio with the shot attempt, Romero with the rebound. And let's see what the referee calls here. It should uh, be a foul on Tenorio. Foul on Tenorio. Okay, a lot of composure aspect now. Del Carmen gets out of the game. Noah Cruz checks in. For FD also checking in is number 13, Jacob Regis. Tenorio's coming out of the game. He doesn't look too happy coming out of the game. Coach E's got to talk to him, settle him down. He's one of the key players. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of game left. There's no reason for FD to panic right now, right? I mean, the difference in this third quarter is quite simple. GW is just playing with a lot more passion. They're playing harder. They're playing with a lot more heart. Uh, you know, and that, they're, they're, they're out-efforting FD right now. And, you know, FD just needs to settle down, get a couple stops. Oh, Kanko had the shot, chose to pass it up top to Troltis, who's creating to the right side. Mishandles the ball. And Romero with the steal, brings it up to Cruz, who's taking it up court. Let's see if FD can score. Three-pointer by Baker on the ring is long. Rebound by Ugin. Osborne dribbles off to the side wisely. He had three FD defenders who got back on defense. But, you know, with GW nursing this lead right now, this plays to their favor because now they can dictate the pace. Now they don't have to rush. Trotis with an attempt. It's off to the right side. Cruz with the rebound. Jacob dribble. Uh, Jacob Rages dribbles off to the left side. Kicks it out to Baker. He made the basket, but there was a foul before the basket. So do not count that three-point attempt by Baker. We do have 59 seconds left. 41 to 33. GW leads by eight points. Well, that will send Rages to the line. Five team fouls for GW in the quarter. That's probably the only thing they've done wrong in this quarter is foul too much. 
McKenna, very um, keynote. GW has l less turnovers than the first two quarters combined. I mean, we, we're seeing that they're not turning the ball over. The, obviously, uh, Coach Mandel's um, message was to take care of the basketball. So that's something that that they're doing positive on this on the third quarter. Well, they're, they're, they're not only taking care of the basketball. They're not only taking care of the basketball, but they're also attacking the basket on the opposite end of the floor, which is something they didn't do as often. FD trying to pull a quick one, sending Baker to the line. It's supposed to be Rageous. Baker, probably FD's best free throw shooter, so great job by Coach Aquino. Just that's probably why the they tried to the sneak <laughs> him in. Misses the front end of the free throw there. So again, uh, folks, if you're following, it's 41 to 33. GW has a lead, incredible third quarter, big third quarter for the Geckos. Camacho, Camacho with the rebound. rebound. He has to take care of the basketball though. Uh, the jump ball forced by uh, Romero, Camacho. Possession goes back to FD. So there's a hustle again by Romero. Yeah, so FD right now, they, they, they can get this to at least a four point game if they play smart here. All they need to do is get a basket, come down the opposite end, get one stop, come back, get another basket, make it a four possession game, possibly a, uh, I mean a four point game, possibly a three point game, go into the final quarter. Yeah, just do what GW did to close out the half. Romero got away with a travel. You counted that basket? Yep. Yep, 41 to 35, 42 seconds left, GW has possession. There's a trap. On the left side, that's what FD needs to do. Force a trap. The foul on Trelta. So that's, you know, again, GW is taking it right into the trapping zones as if they're dribbling right into it. Um, you know, Coach Mandel needs to make an adjustment on that there. Yeah, you do not dribble to the sideline. Someone in the in the middle has to flash though, so that so that uh, Trelta's could have give the ball up to the middle part of the. Of yeah, the, that's, the court. and that's Trelta's third personal foul too. And him and Apiak have been carving out FD's defense in the second half. They can't afford to lose him. Okay, we have Leon Guerrero at the free throw stripe. Thirty-three seconds left. Trailing by six. And this is the first of two free throws. Okay. So now Camacho's on Romero. So if there's a long rebound, you have to be aware. Bring Troutus to the other side. But then Leon Guerrero makes the free throw. It's a five point game. 41 to 36, 31 seconds left. Will GW take the last shot? And they dribbles the ball out. Wait, timeout. The other refs are conferring with each other. The initial call was FD's ball. Yeah, I think I, th I think Aquino needs to have needs to let needs to let the uh, the trail official have that there. I don't know what kind of angle he saw, but great job by the officials coming together. It looks like. Official Robert Tomadong saying, I got a good look at it. Okay, Crew so Chief FD, Aquino allowing him to make the call. The Friars got um, a break there. Let's see if they take the last shot. Pass. Leon Guerrero down low. Cash is in. Good pass from Cruz. Nine. Okay, and that's the third quarter. GW is nursing. We're not nursing. It was a good. It was a good third quarter by the Geckos. They're leading 41 to 38. Fasten your seatbelts for a big fourth quarter. We, it's basketball. Anything can happen. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, GW took advantage of that third quarter. They, they made some adjustments defensively, shut down some easy opportunities that FD had. Uh, but most importantly, they attacked the basket. They didn't turn the ball over. Uh, you know, the only mistake, as I mentioned, they, they fouled a little too much, and that allowed FD to go to the free throw line, score some points without the clock moving. They, they took the eight-point game down to three, heading into the fourth quarter, much better than what I expected. Yeah, and um, I, bet, I bet Tenorio's got to settle down. You're only down by three points. 
So as long as you, you can go on a little run to start the, the fourth quarter, get momentum on your side, force GW to call timeout, get the GW crowd out of this game, and get momentum back towards your side. That's yeah. what I would tell my team. Right, right. And you know what, FD, the problem with FD is they're making one, two, maybe three passes and then trying to go one-on-one -on -one or trying to isolate someone down in the post. They need to shift GW's defense a little bit more, you know, maybe get into some pick-and-roll action and force some mismatches and then look to attack. Um, or a little high-low action between uh, Romero and Tenorio. One at the, yeah, the but they haven't, they haven't done that all season. I don't expect to do that, th them to do that tonight. GW, on the other hand, you know, Coach Mandel is just, hey, guys, we came out. We had a good defensive third quarter with the exception of the last minute and a half. We need to get back to that. Communicate, box out, rebound, get the ball up the court, and we got the lead. There's no reason for us to rush right now. Let's, the first, let's dictate the pace and force the FD to slow it down. For minutes and 30 seconds of the quarter, GW was taking care of the basketball. If they limit their turnovers, they have a really good shot of winning this game. Yeah, you just for have sure. To limit those turnovers. For sure. Well, you know, GW is probably putting up about 30 or 40 percent less shots than FD. You know, but their shots are putting up a lot more high quality. Osborne, great job avoiding the backcourt there. <laughs> Trail test up top. Finds Frederick. Their APX back Ooh. in the game. Another Hesley. That is absolutely poor defense. Rageous. Rageous with an off balance shot. Took it to Treltis there. Okay, 43 to 40. The Geckos lead. Here comes the FD trap. Going to the sideline. Someone needs to crash in the middle, but Apiak dribbles out of himself out of trouble. Good block by Romero. No foul call on that. No, nah, great, 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 great. No call. Up. Romero is known to just go straight up. Yeah. Both both players are jamming at each other. This is not an exhibition game. Yeah. These teams want to win. Yeah, you know, it, it, they they were nice to each other the first three quarters, but you can <laughs> see now that both teams are like, no, hell no, we 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 want this. Okay, we got Tenorio back in the game. He has three fouls. Uh, subbing out. Well, for FD, there's no true point guard, but then again, the bigs can take up the ball for right. FD. Right, you know, Cruz and Tenorio do most of the ball handling duties with this lineup on the floor anyway, so they're, you know, Coach E's not overly concerned with that. Okay, Frederick with the basketball. Off to Treltes on the right wing. He has APAG on the right side if he wants. Camacho comes to set the pick. The double team comes from Romero. Treltes retreats. APAG with the ball. Thought about shooting a 30-footer there. Out to Treltis with a three-point attempt. Back iron, rebound to who else? Romero. Good defensive stand there on FDM that possession. The senior Rages stepping up in this fourth quarter right now. And that's Jacob Rages, no more of a shooter, but he's starting to get the ball going to the basket. He's made, he's made two tough shots here. To that's something about FD, the depth. They could come from anybody. Right. There's games where it's Baker. Right. There's right. games where it's Del Carmen. There's or, games where it's Kitigua or that, Guerrero. Right now, in the fourth quarter, it's Rages, and he has a chance to tie this game up with a little over six minutes to go. Coming back into the game for GW, number two, Peter Rugg, and number 34, Frederick. Droughtis is going to get a break. I didn't hear the announcement. I do not know how many fouls he has. I don't know if that was uh, the reason why they took him out of the basketball game. Yeah, we Ray just has an opportunity to tie this contest right now and give the people wearing maroon shirts some reason to cheer. Okay, Camacho with the board. GW clinging to a one-point lead. Six minutes and 30 seconds left in this game. Osborne dribbles, spins, throws out to Frederick, down to Uggen, who drains a three-pointer. He puts up three fingers and oh, shows the gun sign to Fire Nation and is going to get a technical foul for yeah. over-celebrating. You don't need to do that, young yep. man. Uggen, I mean, you know, he celebrated already. He didn't have to talk a little bit out of that. 
You know what I mean? So now, uh, in this case, the technical foul. I think uh, Jimmy E's gonna bring Baker in to shoot the free yeah, throws. Yeah, because it's a because it's a technical twos, foul. Right? Yeah, you yeah. you the 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 team that they get to shoot two's their shooter now. So, Coach E bringing in Colin Baker, who's arguably their best free throw shooter. Yeah, when you're in this game, you gotta control your emotions. Don't over celebrate. So Baker will be shooting two free throws, and FD will be having well that would retain the possession. Yeah, We've Coach. Got six minutes and 17 seconds left. GW's up 46 to 42. Yeah, you know, interesting in the in the break there. Coach Mandel called Crew Chief Aquino to the to the bench and he said, hey, you know, I get it. You know, I agree with you. Maybe my player did celebrate a little too much, but the previous possession when Romero had the big block, he did the same thing. You know? So why is it that I got the tech and he didn't? So that's what Mandel right now, you know, he's planting the seed. He's getting into Crew Chief Aquino's head saying, hey, you know, there, there, there's a call that maybe shouldn't have swung that way. So you know, that, that may impact 50-50 calls in the games as we move on. Especially if calls with 30 seconds left that could decide the outcome of this. That's what I'm saying. Good, good, good job by Coach Mandel to work the ref on that. Okay, so now um, Baker makes both free throws, so it's a good, good decision by Coach Yi. It's 46 to 44. GW's clinging to the lead. Baker with a three-point attempt, and it goes in and out. I mean, it goes in, it bounces up and down and goes in. So now FD has a lead, 47 to 46, six minutes left in regulation. Yeah, but more importantly, you got Baker now playing with a little bit of confidence, but Peter Huggin. Good oh, board by API. That was a Kawhi Leonard-esque kind of rebound. GW takes the lead, 48 to 47. Tenorio takes the basket, another lead change. That's the fourth lead change of the quarter. Tenorio makes the basket, good pass from Cruz. 49 to 48, FD now leads once again. You gotta, you gotta let Apiag take over now. Oh yeah. Again, FD late on their backside rotation. Receive. 50 to 49, Terrible GW decision still by Frederick. Cruz. Gives it up to Apiag on the left wing, goes for the three pointer. Oh. Somebody put some water in, that guy's hot. APAG scores seven points this quarter. Three-pointer by Baker. And Baker. Like I said, you know, a great call by Coach E's. Letting the shooter see two free throws go to the net. He's hit back-to-back -back threes. That gave him his confidence eight points. on his, eight on points his three -pointer in the quarter. That he made at the top of the key. He missed his first three. But again, you know, one of the Achilles heel of Father Reyes the entire season is their inability to take charges, their inability to get run over. You know, taking a charge is one of the most intimidating plays in all of basketball. If you're able to take one, maybe two charges, it really puts the second guess in all those drivers going to the basket. And that's the key to GW's game, driving to the basket. We throw good by Osborne. GW is 54-52. to 52. Romero comes back in the game, subs uh, Leon Guerrero out. Rages gets out of the game. Del Carmen comes back into the game. Uh, looking like uh, Darren Camacho is getting stretched out on the side there by assistant coach VJ Borja. Hopefully he's not cramping. The legend Joey Gogwe offer him some water. APAG again gets a hand on the ball. Osborne wisely pulls it out. And again, FD's backside defense is very slow, rotating towards the basketball. They're getting stuck in the paint. They're getting stuck to shooters on the opposite end of the floor, and they're making it very easy for GW right now to come to the line. And it's not like APAG's getting a pick. He's just driving by his man. Yeah, he's, he's blowing by the first guy, which, hey, all right, that's fine, you know. Talented, talented ball handler getting by the first defender, but where's the second defender that needs to step up to stop him outside the paint? They've been, FD's been very inconsistent with that all year long, and GW's exposing that to the ability right now. And now if he's smart, he'd continue to drive by the basket, continue to drive by the man. When the help comes, someone has to come down on the weak side, and it'll be a wide-open layup. Right, right. And, you know, but eventually, once they do make that rotation, you know, that, that's exactly what's going to happen. And, you know, if it's not a layup, it's a wide-open three. And if it's not a wide-open three, now you've got a guy running, having to cover 15 feet to cover that gap. 
you can easily blow by them on the opposite side and run that same type of action over and over and over again. Okay, um, just a score update. GW is holding on to a 54 to 52 lead. We got four minutes and 33 seconds left of action. Caden Apia going to the line for two free throws to extend that lead. A good game so far, something that we hope for to have in this uh, champion versus champion game. It's not an exhibition game. These two teams want to win this basketball contest and they're doing it in front of a capacity crowd here at the Phoenix Center. Oh, I'm yeah. really surprised to see how many people came out to watch this game. Well, you know, the, it, number one, as a, as a coach and as a player, you always want to win the last game that you play. You know what I mean? And then for both of these teams, having not played each other, they're not just representing their school, but they're also representing their league, you know? And that's, that's, that's probably one of the good things that has come out with the double I, double AG split, and the ESA split is that, you know, you look at GW and you, you see the coaches of the other schools coming, supporting them, and on the flip end, the double I, double IG, you see the same coaches of the double I, double IG supporting FD, so, you know, they you have that. respective league to win. Correct. To say, hey, we played the best competition this year. Yeah, I see Coach Guerrero in the stadiums over there from Guam High. Yeah, Coach Julian Canovas was here as well. Obviously, his, his kids played the JV game earlier. Okay, we're back to action. APAC misses the front end of uh, two free throws. It's still GW leading by two points, 54 to 52. Make that 55 to 52. Uh, Rages is checked in the game. Came in for uh, Cruz. No, it's an Oriole. An Oriole gets away Ooh. with that offensive push off. Okay, 55 to 54, the GW hanging on to a one point lead. Driving to the basket once again. DJ Osborne takes the lead back up to three points. The Geckos lead. And just keep in mind, these Geckos aren't the top seed. They're not the undefeated team. They're a third seed team who had to go through two upsets to get to this game. They're yeah. playing with a little chip on their shoulder right now. Oh, for sure, for sure. You know, that's what Coach Mandel said. You know, Coach Mandel said, hey, we've been the underdog. No one's given us a chance all season long, you know. So they've embraced that role. They've embraced being the underdog. And, you know, Coach Mandel, he said it best. He goes, look, we can control our effort. And although people may question us, as long as our effort is proper, we'll have a chance to stay in the game and eventually win one. And right now, they're, the momentum's on their side. You know, they're getting a lot more easy opportunities And in that previous play, um, the foul was on DJ Osborne. Tenorio was uh, driving to the basket. Tenorio's trying to, he's being a little bit more assertive. He's putting the team on his back. Give me the ball, I'll drive to the basket. If I don't make it, I'll get to the free throw line. Right, they but can't how, guard me, I'm too big. I, I agree, so, but how much of that can they sustain? That's the thing about it. He has to work hard to get his own shot. They don't run any action to make it easy for him. They allow him or force him to go one-on-one, -on -one, and that's, that's going to wear on a player. Can he do it for another three minutes and 40 seconds? That remains to be seen. And this, and this is where fatigue hurts you at the free throw line. You know, you, you're a little bit more tired. You need a little bit more legs. So FD, uncharacteristically, just hasn't shot the ball well at the free throw line this entire game. And let, Tenorio misses the front end of the two free throws. The score is 57 to 54. GW's up. He makes a second free throw, 57 to 55. Let's see if GW can get a stop here. I mean, uh, FD can get a stop. They force a turnover, ball out of bounds. So they escape, not having to turn the ball over. Yeah, yeah, you know, and again, you know, good. With the ball on the sideline. Yeah, lucky break by Osborne there. You got to be careful bringing the ball up the side. If you are not tight to that sideline you're allowing those defenders to sneak behind you lucky break by Osborne okay we have Apiak taking the ball in Frederick Treltis Osborne in the game for GW for the Friars we have Del Carmen Regis Tenorio Ramiro and Baker coach E uh, subs back Regis back in recognizing the hot hand who started off this quarter and you have APAG also on the on the other end for GW. Schultz is also back in the game, who had a big third quarter. Takes a three-point shot. It's long. 
Ball out of bounds. Possession to the Friars. Yeah, the Friars are jumping every pick and roll action they have right now. Coach Mandel making a you know great adjustment and popping his picker. Um, you know, I like to see him drive the basket a little bit more. They had a two on one with Romero down there. I like to see him attack the basket. The I just possession. give the ball to the API and just say go and create. And Tenorio doesn't make the basket. Camacho with a long touchdown pass to API, and he makes it. GW up by four. Baker with the catch and shoot. In and out. Camacho juggles it. Chaltis secures the rebound. The ball up to DJ Osborne. GW is up by four points. GW Two wisely slowing the game down right now. Just create. Del Carmen with the yeah, touch poor. foul. And both teams aren't in the bonus. Both teams have three fouls on each side. Again, if you didn't hear us earlier for uh, uh, for the high school rules, it's per quarter. Once you receive once you receive the fifth foul, you get to the two shots at the free throw line. Both teams have three fouls at the moment. Subs uh, out. Del Carmen out. Rages out. Uh, Noah Cruz back in the ball game. Along with Phoenix Borja. Apiak has the ball, gives it up to Frederick. It looks like they're calling a double foul on Borja and Camacho. The two sophomores battling it down low. That's a big, big call because both teams now with four team both, fouls. Yeah. Now any foul that's not a player control offensive Gets you foul to the free throw line. will be two free throws for either team. That may be very, very valuable as we get deeper and deeper into this fourth quarter. It's a very intense game here, Eddie. The referee's telling the, the fans behind the basket to move away. And the GW faithful really trying to will their team right now. And now the Friar Nation getting back into the game. Unbelievable atmosphere here tonight, Jay, at the FD Phoenix Center. And it's equal. It's not one-sided. There's an equal amount of fans for both teams. Yes, for sure. For sure. It, and, it, and it's great, you know, after 12 years to see the GW Gecko fans come out in full force again. Ball to Frederick, gives it to Osborne. Let's see if he can create something. Every possession is key right now. Yeah, but for FD, I mean, right now, it looks like GW wants to use some clock. This is something they did against Okadu a lot. Osborne's driving to the basket. Oh! And he flexes, drives into Ramiro's chest. Over celebrate. Mm. No technical foul this time. Good yeah. job, Coach Mendo. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, it, 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 it's tough, you know. Again, Crew Chief Aquino, you know, referees, referees, you know, are trained that, you know, big moments like this, you don't, you do not want to be the reason momentum shifts. You do not want to be the reason the other team is able to, to kind of separate themselves. So. Um, you know, great emotion. job by Aquino, but I'm I'm pretty sure he's gonna go to Coach Bandel and he's gonna say, Hey, if he does you need again, to talk, you need to talk I'm to Osborne to. because if he does that again, I'm gonna have no choice but to do it. But it was a great basket, regardless. He drove against two of FD's bigs, drew the foul against Melo, and he made the basket. That was a tough acrobatic shot to give GW a six point lead. Yeah, with two minutes and eleven seconds left. Possibly a seven-point lead because he's going to the yeah, free throw you know, line. Yeah, you know, but 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 FD, you know, again, I I I've been harping on that backside line defense the whole game long. They they're just, you know, it reminds me of the double I double IG championship game with Cam Brantley. They're standing in the paint, waiting for the guy to attack them, rather than stepping up and playing defense a little higher, forcing them to get out of control. 
You can't wait for Osborne, Appiak, Treltis to come to you and then try to challenge them. You need to guard them as quickly as possible, force them to get a little bit more out of control, and then send a second defender to try to turn them over. And right now, that late rotation has been an Achilles heel, and that's why FD finds themselves in this hole. Well, again, this is another test for the Friars. You said they have not been in this kind of deficit this late into the game all year. They have an undefeated team. Let's see if they can answer, though. I want to see an overtime. Let's see if they have it in them. We got Osborne at the line, uh, two minutes and 11 seconds left. A lot of time for FD to um, counter. But you got to keep in mind, though, any foul sends you to the free throw line. For sure, for sure. That, that would be my strategy if I was Coach G. I would say, guys, we're not shooting any more three-point shots unless there's a driving kick and we get a shot attempt off an extra pass. Otherwise, I want to see everything going to the basket. No jump shots at this point. Everything to the basket. Oh, Apia with the block on Cruz. They're pushing the ball up. Osborne takes it back to Apiag. He's, oh, oh, I think that I was, was about um, to say, Apiag almost got away with yeah, the travel, yeah. but. Official Ernest um, calls a travel. He saw it from the other, on the other end there. And again, I brought the ball out, Eddie. I, it's oh, yeah. a minute 50 left. Let's oh, yeah. organize the offense. Let's get a high percentage shot. I but agree 100%. You know, when you see I, daylight between you, one defender between you and the basket, you know, you're, you're 16, 17 years old. Let's try and close it out now. But not only that, but you're also, not only that, but remember, GW has had a lot of success, a lot of success attacking the basket on these transition opportunities, you know? And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So it's real tough to, yeah, you know, I, it, it's real tough for a kid to say, hey, man, this is what I've been doing all game long. It's been working. I don't want to do it right now, so. Okay, and FD's giving, getting another opportunity here. A minute 50 left. Tenorio has the basketball. Yeah, but FD needs a bucket here. This is a must score. But again, you see FD, no. They don't, they're, they're just trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. So if I was GW here, I'm using this clock. I'm forcing FD to come out. Dangerous pass there. Apiag's going to take it to the basket. Oh, the little... So that might have been the runner. dagger. 63 to 57, the Geckos answer. A minute and 20 left. Tenorio's going to take it. Mid-range shot is short. Osborne with the rebound. Minor celebration. Doesn't over-celebrate. It's a yeah. foul on, um, it's either Leon Guerrero or Tenorio who's going to get. Yeah, Osborne, for this foul. Osborne's been the difference in this fourth quarter on both ends of the floor. He's been scrappy. He's guarded Tenorio the whole game, and although Tenorio's had some good opportunities scoring the basketball, Osborne has made it very, very difficult for him uh, defensively. And then on the offensive end, he's, he's carried them right now. He's been getting a lot of attacks to the basket, second chance opportunities. All he has to do is make free throws, and GW looks to continue their underdog status and steal a, 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 a national championship away from the Father Duane's Friars. We got Osborne at the line. Can make this an uh, eight point game. Right now, it's uh, the Geckos are leading by six, 63 to 57. And he makes the first. You know, and again, this is a position the Falduenas Friars have not been in all season long with the exception of a road game against St. Paul. So, you know, they, they don't know what it's like to play in this type of situation. Osborne, two clutch free throws. 65 to 57, FD needs to go. Noah Cruz just has not played his best tonight. Looking to get bailed out on a foul call. I mean, I, there's no reason to take a three-point shot. There's, yes, you're down eight, but all you need to do is score some baskets, make, foul them, force them to make shots at the free throw line. GW just needs to hold on to the basketball and not turn it over. Oh. Cruz gets it back. I'd be fouling right now. 65 to 60. I'd be fouling right now, going for the basketball. 
Make sure they go for the basketball. Or steal. Leongro with the steal. Tenorio's gonna bring the ball up court. Keep down it. five. Keep it. 32 seconds left. Baker with a big shot and one. Big bucket by Colin Baker. 65 to 63, 23, 26 seconds left. And he's going to the free throw line. Yep. All of a sudden, this is basketball for you. Baker with the hell of a three-point shot. He's got to make the free throw, make it a one-point game. Now FD, FD has the opportunity to go for the steal. If you don't get the steal, you foul. Yeah. Send them to the line for two free throws. It's a one-possession basketball game right now. If I'm Coach E right now, I'm, I'm, I'm telling the referee, hey, if he makes this free throw, I want a timeout. I want a timeout. I want to set my defense. I've got two timeouts left right now. I want to set my defense up. I want to tell my team exactly that. Hey, they're going to get the ball in bounds if they do. Once they do, we're going for the first trap. If after the first trap we're not able to get a turnover, we need to go for the ball immediately and try to foul. Coach E, he's got to use a timeout and burn that right now. He's telling his players right now to foul. Go for the ball. No away from the play. Okay. Timeout, jump ball. What's going on here, refs? And there's it looks the like foul. Looks like kind of hit his head. All right, looked like that should have been a jump ball. Referee Robert Tamagdong allowing them to play there. It looked like it could have been a jump ball. Uh, regardless of what Charltis does at the free throw line, though, it's still going to be a one possession game. Uh, so, FD right now, again, I still, depending on what, if you're down two, I'm looking to get the ball to Tenorio, but you got to run some misdirection action and generate an easy shot opportunity. You cannot allow him to just go one on one. GW is too good in the half court, they'll collapse down. If it's a three point game, I still would not go for a three with over 20 seconds to go. go I'd push two. the ball up the court. Try to get a quick two, look for that first trap again. If you don't get it, then foul, force GW. Put the pressure on them to make baskets. Chautis' free throw is long. It's not gonna be a three point game. Regardless, GW is gonna be winning with, with FD having possession. Now they call a timeout. Icing the shooter. Coach E with a timeout right now, so yeah, uh, you know, Coach Bandell right now telling his team, hey, most important thing, we got to make this free throw, all right? After they make this free throw, we got to communicate defensively. We need one stop. If we can get one stop, we have a good opportunity to steal a basketball game right now. So Coach Bandell is going to will his team. He goes, hey, we've been the underdog all season long. All we need right now is one stop. You've done a great job all game. You just need one more, and you could walk out of here champions. On the flip end of that, again, Coach E, he's got to go to his best play. He's got to go to Tenorio, Romero, something in the, in the paint, high percentage shot. Put pressure on the referees to call some contact. So, but you would still go for a two-pointer? I would not. It, it's a two-point game. There's no risk. Now, if you get a collapse and get a wide open look, Baker's your hot hand right now. So if you're able to get him a clean look off, off, off good offensive swings, I'll settle for that. But outside of that, I would only want to get the ball to Romero or, or Tenorio to the basket. I agree with you. So right now, it's, it's a one-point game right now. Very big free throw for Treltis. Yeah, he misses big, it. Big this changes the game completely. <laughs> the two crowds are going at it right now. Okay, Trout is at the line. 26.7 seconds left. He misses it. Romero juggles it. I'm out. Gets a ball to Tenorio. FD has the opportunity to win the basket. Oh. A charge. And they finally called him for that. They finally called him for that. You know, Tenorio has been getting away with that all game long. I understand he's upset, but he's been doing it all game long. And he fouls out. Timeout, 
But again, okay, does that put that puts GW at the at the free throw line, correct? On an offensive yes. Ball? No, no, it does not. No, it does not. That's okay. a player control foul. So GW is going to get the ball and bounce right now. So again, we're back to that same strategy. We are playing man to man, man to man defense, tight man to man defense. We want to go for the first trap. We want to go for the first trap. And if it's not there, we want to foul right away. 17 seconds can be an eternity in a basketball game. Yeah, for sure. And you know, do you recognize uh, like maybe Trelltis to get the ball? He just missed two. Yeah. I wouldn't want APAC to have the basketball. Or no, for Osborne. sure, for sure. But you know, I'm I'm, I'm fouling Trelltis. I'm fouling Camacho. I'm fouling Frederick. If they're in the game, those are the guys I'm looking at to foul. I'm denying APAC and I'm denying Osborne right now. <coughs> Vandell right now looks. He's he's bringing in. Derek Vandell is bringing in um, number 32. Aiden Unkenko. Aiden Unkenko. He might be one of their better free throw shooters. That's yeah, smart. He has Trelta's inbounding the ball. Right. But, you know, if I was Baker, I wouldn't guard that right now. If I was Baker, I, yeah, exactly. And Coach, he's telling him. I wouldn't guard Double. that right now. I would say, hey, turn around. Guard whoever's coming to you. Deny that. There you go. That's the gone guy to foul. So API going to the line for two free throws, chance to make this a three-point game with 16 seconds to go. And now on offense, FD's gonna have the basketball again. With an opportunity to win. Yeah, again. No so. is not in the basketball game. I'm gonna go to Baker or Romero. Yeah, if I'm FD, I'm putting Jarrett Cohen in the game. I'm putting the freshman in, I'm saying, hey man, we need two points. Drive, make a decision, see if you can't kick it out. MVP tags for Caden Apiak right now from the GW crowd, and we can't disagree with them. Yeah, he's had a phenomenal game. That third quarter was what sparked everything for this, for the GW Geckos. And he's at the free throw line. <laughs> the Friars are saying overrated to Apiak. Man, it's an unbelievable crowd tonight. He misses the front end. Very important, though, to make this shot. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You definitely have to make this free throw. If you don't make this free throw, this really puts a lot of pressure on GW's defense. Still a lot of pressure, even if he does, but, you know, you, you want to at least, hey, if I give up a two, we're going to overtime, versus if I give up a two, we could lose the game. Rages is in the game for Leon Grill. Some offense. The oh, board big. goes to Rages. He gives the ball to Cruz. I get a timeout here. I this get a timeout here. seconds left. Is he driving to the basket? That's not. Oh. Foul on APIAG. It looked out of control there. Yeah, Cruz hasn't had the best game all night long. I, I'm not sure I'd, I'd want the ball in his hands right now. Interesting situation right now. Cruz got to hurry up. If Cruz does not get up, the referees may force FD to use their final timeout, which I'm pretty sure Coach E does not want to do at this point. Yeah, you need that in this crucial time to advance the ball. Maybe if he doesn't make the free throws. Are we going to overtime? It's a one-point game right now. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure why they're allowing him to. He's subbing in. Kitago is coming in the game for Cruz. Cruz is injured. Oh, if I was Coach Mandel, I'd be arguing this like crazy right now. It looks now. like he's fine. Yeah, if I was Coach Mandel, I would be arguing this like crazy right now. I would not allow them to make this substitution. Cruz was able to walk off the court. I would not have allowed that substitution to happen. And Kitago is a starting shooting guard for FD. But and he hasn't the, played all quarter. And one of their better free throw shooters, though. Sinks it. Okay, curious to know how many timeouts GW has if he makes this shot. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, if, they, if he makes it, they call timeout, they could advance the ball, right? I don't believe they can. They'd have to inbound the ball, bring it in, and then they could call timeout.
Well, Coach E calls a timeout. He has his best free throw shooter at the line. If he makes it, the Geckos have seven seconds to do something crazy like they did at Southern High when they beat the Okudu Bulldogs. Yeah, I really don't know what Coach E is doing talking to referees right now. you got to go talk to your team. You know what I mean? You call a timeout, you haven't really spoken to your team at all. I understand what the logic is behind this right now. I mean, right now you're setting up defense. You know, you're going to have a one-point lead or it's going to be a tie game. Either way, GW is going to have the ball, seven seconds to go. More than likely, Coach Mandel is going to use this timeout at some point. you got to set up your defense. you got to understand what you want to do defensively. So maybe put in um, Leon Grell for Rages, uh, sub defense for offense. Big free throw. The biggest free throw of his life. Yeah, for sure, for the senior Kitagua. Drains it. Drains it. Down by one. Okay. And that's a really tough break for GW. Again, Cruz, definitely not one of the better free throw shooters for Father Duenas. You know, and I, I really wish that high school would change that rule. So an interesting, an interesting fact, in FIBA basketball, international basketball, if an injured player is unable to shoot free throws, the opposing team's coach gets to pick the player that replaces him. And I think that's more fair, or excuse me, fair in a situation like that. Because not to question the integrity of players, but it's easy to fake an injury just to get your best free throw shooter on the court I versus allowing the opposing coach to pick them for I you. I was thinking so. the same thing, like why wouldn't GW be able to pick the free throw shooter from FD? Maybe that's something that I could bring up in the next meeting. Yeah, but again, for Coach Mandel, I would have argued that. I would have stopped it and I would have said, look, he got up under his own power. He walked off under his own power. Why are they able to sub him on a foul? If he's able to stand up and walk under his own power, he's able to shoot two free throws under his own power. Okay, where is the ball going to be brought to? It's at the side, It's at the end line. So they have seven seconds. They got to keep in mind the clock. You don't need to pull that trigger too early. Yeah, and again, if I'm, if I'm Del Carmen, I'm not guarding the basketball. I'm denying them anything coming inside. Maybe it's a front like what Baker did earlier where he right. ran away. Yeah, so if I'm a FD right now, I'm saying, hey, keep everything in front of you. Okay, they bring the ball into to Troutis. Oh, kickball, kickball. Good call by the ref. 2.3 seconds left, or maybe they got to look at the clock and see how much time was left. No, they're going to leave it at 2.3. That was good. I saw that from here. No timeouts. No timeouts. You got to go. All right. 2.3 seconds. Ball on the sideline for GW. GW must have this under, in their practice. I don't know why APAG taking the ball to bounce. I would, have, I would be getting the ball into APAG at this point in the game. It's a ball to Osborne. Oh, in and out. That almost went in. 66 to 65. Great game by both teams. Osborne's three-point shot went in and out. FD gets away with one. Waving by to the uh, GW Geckos right now. Yeah, you know, congratulations for the FD Friars, but if I'm Coach Mendel, I'm a little sour right now. Again, a key, uh, we, cannot, Jay, we cannot ignore this. A key point in the game, Noah Cruz drives to the basket, gets fouled, goes down as an injury, is able to get up under his own power, is able to walk off the court under his own power. But the referees allowed him to get subbed out and Coach E putting in one of his better free throw shooters to make two free throws to give him a one point lead with seven seconds to go. Couldn't agree with you more, but you know, you got to also credit Kitagua for stepping in there. He wasn't playing the entire fourth quarter. He made the two free throws. He did his job basically. 
Uh, maybe that's something the IIAG needs to come back to the drawing board and say, hey, if this situation happens, look at what happened in the champion versus champion game. We got to be able to have the other team pick which shooter will go into the basketball game. Yeah, I just but regardless, Eddie, this was very entertaining. This is not just an exhibition game. Good game by both teams. They shouldn't hold their heads low. The Father Duenas Friars remain undefeated for 2024. Great game by both teams. What is your closing statement right now? What you know, will you... You know, hats off to both GW and Father Duenas. They put an absolutely entertaining game up for the fans to see tonight. Props to GSPN for putting together. Can't wait to see what happens next year. Okay, and that's it for us. Congratulations to the Father Duenas Friars. Thank you, Eddie Pelkey for joining me in this commentary. It was a very, very entertaining game. We'll see you guys next year.